Maybe only one student is going to go to A school. So look at the guy on your left. Now look at the guy on your right. One of you is going to get into PA school. Those are the numbers. Those are some stats for you. And just in case any of you are too young to remember that movie, that was actually from Coach Carter. Absolutely fantastic movie. One of my favorites. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's a classic. Anyway, without further ado, here's the video. Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. And today I'm just shooting a quick video to share with you my pre-PA stats. Okay, so stats for my GPA, my uh, patient care experience hours, and a few other things like GRE that I applied to PA school with that ended up actually getting me into PA school and, you know, the rest is history. Uh, now I'm a practicing PA. So a lot of people commenting on my channel, asking me on Instagram and offline, uh, you know, what were your stats? As if if I get the same GPA and the same number of hours as you did, then I will also get into school and that's a guaranteed, right? Not exactly. You know, stats do uh, play a very important part, but they don't paint the whole picture of an applicant that ultimately gets them into PA school. However, stats are important, GPA is important, hours are important. So therefore, just to kind of put your mind at ease, I'm going to, at the very least, show you my stats for what got me into PA school. Okay, so let's go back in time to 2019 and see what my stats were for getting into PA school. All right, so as you can see on this little spreadsheet here, my total patient care experience was about 2,400 hours, 2,400 hours, which equates to about uh, about a year and a half, a little bit less than a year and a half of total full-time work, uh, 40 hours a week. My shadowing is a total of about 155 hours, research about 1,100 hours, uh, 1,092. And then if you look over here, you will see my uh, college GPA. So this was before I went to post -bac, was 2.98. My post -bac GPA was 3.89. I rounded up and said it was a 3.9. So basically a 3.0 in college before I did the post -bac. And then when I decided to start fixing my application, decided to start taking you know, my uh, pre-PA application seriously, I realized I had to get my grades up to show that I can handle a tough curriculum. And so I went to post -bac. And I ended up getting a 3.9, as you can see right here, 3.89. Also, the school I ended up getting into did not need the GRE, but I did take the GRE anyway because I was applying to multiple schools, some of which did need the GRE. And as you can see here, my total GRE score was 313. My uh, verbal was 159, which for whatever reason, that cohort seemed to have a very low verbal score because that verbal score put me at the 82nd percentile. Uh, but based on my experience reviewing applications, 159 should not be at the 82nd percentile. It should be probably closer to the 50th percentile. So basically, fairly average verbal score, but for whatever reason in that cohort, it was above average. Uh, my quantitative, my math score was 154, which was the 51st percentile. And then my GRE writing score was 4 out of 6, which was the 55th percentile. So right around, you know, the 50th percentile, a little tiny bit above average for my GRE. Okay, so a few things that are not mentioned in these stats are my volunteer hours, which I just did not calculate. I volunteered all through my time in the military. I volunteered before the military. I volunteered after the military. And just compiling all those documents would take forever. But I did get what was called the, um, I forget, but it was like basically the volunteer medal in the military, which you have to have a certain number of volunteer hours to get. So I had a pretty significant number of volunteer hours. Uh, not a lot of them were medical. Most of them were with like animal shelters and whatnot, walking dogs, cleaning up after dogs. So nothing really related to like healthcare, but it's just something that I was passionate about. Uh, so that just, you know, shows good things about you if you volunteer. And then another part of my application that's not really in these stats is all the stuff that I did um, before the Navy and after the Navy, all the jobs that I had that again, were not really medical, but definitely were applicable to medicine in certain regards, such as customer service, you know, leadership, uh, responsibilities, things like that. So basically what I'm saying with that is these stats are very important, but they do not paint the entire picture of the applicant, the holistic picture of you as a pre-PA applicant that the school is going to take that holistic picture to decide whether or not they want you in their program. So again, stats are very important, but they are not everything. If your stats are lower than mine, if your stats are uh, lower than like the average, for instance, getting into the school that you want to go to, do not lose hope. You as an applicant might be outstanding in other areas that would make them accept you over somebody whose stats might even be better than yours, you know. Also, one thing uh, to mention here is this 2,400 hours, 
this is what I matriculated with, right? So this is what I had when I started PA school. What I actually ended up applying with was a lot less than this. So I think my application for the school I ended up actually getting into was, uh, I want to say in like September or October was the cutoff. So basically this gastro thing, this would not have even been like a factor because I started this in January. And uh, the physicist thing, this would have probably been at about three or 400 hours less. So total uh, PCE hours, patient care experience hours, when I applied in September, October was probably closer to like eight or 900, you know, less than even a thousand. So um, yeah, this 2,400 hours, this is what I matriculated with, not what I actually applied with. Uh, so I think what I applied with was a little bit less than a thousand hours, which, you know, is a big difference. So there you have it, guys. Um, just wanted to share my stats, my pre-PA stats, and hope that some of you might get some benefit out of it, knowing, you know, exactly what stats I had personally getting into school as somebody who's been to school, been through school, graduated, passed the pants, you know, have been a practicing physician assistant for about a year and a half now, it is possible to get in with these stats. So any questions, post them below. I'll see you guys in the next video.